Come on, Dean. We're going to be here for as long as it takes to get your story straight. Mate, what story? Okay, what do you want me to do, make it up? No, no, I want you to tell me the truth. Have you ever threatened, harassed or intimidated your partner? I'm not doing this. This ends now. I am trying to make sure the Ziggy and your baby are safe. Safe from what? From me? They are my family. What are you even saying? Mac. Mac, what has happened? Is Zig okay? Wait here. I'll talk to her for you. Dean's worried about Ziggy. Yeah, well, she's worried about him too. That's why she sent me. So can you just tell him that she is okay, she can be, given the circumstances? So, has he even been charged with anything? I haven't actually managed to interview him yet. Okay, well, I can talk to him. No, 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 I've got to finish the interview, but you're more than welcome to wait. Gosh, God knows that this is crazy, right? Have a seat. How long this takes is up to him. We are Cy and Sophie. This is Coastal News, a home and away podcast. Your weekly episode companion podcast for your favourite Aussie soap. Hypothetically, mm. if I was to borrow a toaster to make toast with <laughs> and that was stolen, <laughs> would I need to pay for that, Sophie? Uh. Yes. <laughs> I, I didn't have to go to the police station to check. <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> How are you? You good? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yes, I'm good, thank you. Um, yeah, well, we're ready. We're ready and raring this week, aren't we? I've been so. chit chatting off air. Well, I know mm. I am. Mm. <laughs> You're ready. <laughs> ready for the weekend. Woo! That's what I'm ready for. Oh, I know. I know. Don't come quick enough to do these weekends. Don't come quick enough. No. Um, and of course, everybody listening is ready for the weekend because you know what it means a new episode of Coastal News, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 Obviously, the best part of the weekend. Hashtag odds. <coughs> Forget the lion, the fry up, the roast dinner. Forget all that. Coastal News. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're biased or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you will like this podcast. Um, <laughs> all up to date. We are. Yeah. We? Yeah. yeah. Good, yeah. good. And do you want your headlines? I do. Yes. Xander decides to be true to himself, putting the idea of polyamory to bed. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was really proud of that one. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. <laughs> I like that one. Dean is hurled down to YCPD on suspicion of domestic violence, but Bree has made a big mistake. Palmer's putters hit a bit of a recruitment wall, and Tane gets news from his family that makes him feel homesick. Please take the time to like, subscribe and review Coastal News wherever you source your podcasts and ensure you never miss an episode. Xander's sort of second date, or first date with a second person went well. Yeah. We didn't really, we didn't see it, but it happened off air uh, over mm. at the sofas in Salt. Um, and he's he's on his way out from said date. Is he? There's a scene sort of outside the surf club, isn't there? And yeah. Stacey's talking to Remy, and Zana doesn't like it, does he? No. You know, it really gets his back up. Yeah. Um, struggled with this from day one, hasn't he? This mm. this uh, sharing is caring <laughs> motto. Yeah, he has uh, struggled. Yeah. I mean, he goes to Irene for one of his. Do you want know to said to you last week? Was it last week? It was in a recent episode. We we say a lot, but it was in, it was recently. I know it was. It's quite fresh. Um, I said I love how Irene's become Xander and Rose's little go-to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sort of indirectly because of Jasmine, and he off his hotels, and I thought, yes, I love these little Xander Rose Irene scenes. Yeah. And he's he goes and buys his little coffee, and he gets a bit of words of wisdom from Irene over the counter. And she basically says, you can't keep tying yourself up in knots. Mm. Well, that's exactly what she says. 
Um, you know, and, and I think that's him making his mind up then. And I thought that was quite nice that it was Irene that made him come full circle because the week prior, it was Irene saying, there's not just one love in your life, Dal, go go get it. And that made him go and try it. Yeah. And it was Irene's, it, I, I thought it was quite clever that it was Irene that brought him back again. Yeah. And I thought that was quite a nice touch. Yeah, it's lovely. And also she doesn't really know what what her advice is related to at that point does she because it's not until later that he opens up and sort of says you know Stacy and me we're not you know we're not exclusive um, yeah. so when she's giving him that advice the week before about you know you, you, there's more than one love of your life etc she's not she doesn't she know, know. <laughs> what, yeah. what it was about at the time did she because he asked he just has to you know do you believe in the one and she's just like oh well you know doll you know there might be the one right now but there'll be another one in the future basically <laughs> so yeah. She didn't. She didn't know that he meant there was what two right now. I don't think she really understood what she was being asked at the time. Yeah, yeah, and that's what makes it so nice, you know, yeah. about the whole thing. Everyone uh, needs so, an Irene. I need an Irene. I need someone that I can check my decisions with. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, especially in the alcohol aisle at Morrison's. Oh yeah, before I get anywhere near it, <laughs> I need, <laughs> need an Irene. <laughs> she'll definitely tell me to stay off the grog won't she yeah, Not... yeah. <laughs> she bursts into flames if she comes anywhere near it <laughs> um, and he takes her out for lunch he says I want to take you for dinner you know or lunch whatever and have a drink and he sits her down and absolute praise to Xander in this moment from me anyway mm. you know he just lays all his cards out doesn't he he yeah. seemed for me and she's like, oh, you know, you, you know, you said you were open. And he's like, it's not about being open in a nutshell. Mm. This is what he was saying. You know, I tried it and I need to be honest with me, honest with you. I want I, I want someone to fall in love with and someone to commit yeah. with, you know. And I think he had to do that. And she takes it well, doesn't she? And she can't not because he's doing exactly what she does. You know, mm. she's living her true self. Uh, so she, can't, she didn't really have anything to say. And I just thought, do you know what? Good on him. Good yeah. on him. Not uh, for you. No, exactly. I think I think you're right. I mean, if this had dragged on any longer, I think everyone would be screaming at him because he's going to develop, you know, even more serious feelings for if it carried on. So, because he, he'd already put her on the spot in the week, hadn't he, and said, is there a chance that we could be monogamous in the future? And she was like, oh, never say never. And I was thinking that's probably the worst thing you could have said to him. And this is going to drag on. So I was actually really pleased yeah. that he'd come round that quickly and decided, actually, it's not for me. Um, yeah. and, and you're right. What could she say, really? You know, if the fact that she she doesn't want to be monogamous, monogamous I can't I struggle to say that word. <laughs> the fact that she doesn't <laughs> want to just see him exclusively to me means that she doesn't care about him that much. So she'll get over it in a day. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, true. Uh, you know, I, I, I did I said to you last week, didn't I? I didn't want to really use the S word, shallow, mm. but she was coming across as pretty cold in the emotion department. You'd have um, to be, though, wouldn't you? Ask it wouldn't work because if you get too mm. attached to people, it, yeah, she'd have to be yeah. fairly, you know, a bit removed from her feelings. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and that's her choice, and that's her prerog- prerogative. <laughs> as they say um you know and, and it's Sanders just as well you know and, yeah. and I think uh, you know he's a he's a he's a gentle child isn't he he's a gentle boy he yeah. needs he needs someone who's going to love him for what he is and I thought I could have him thoughts on the polyamorous story that sort of beginning middle end done done dusted underlined and put away in an envelope forever now in two, in a fortnight what were your thoughts is it though? That's that's anything I'm not sure about. Is it over? Because is is Stacy still kicking around even though Xander's not interested? She's got a job in the gym. I don't understand what her character's doing now. Is she sticking in the bay or is this over? Could she start dating Nico now? And I don't know. Yeah, but well, it, will it shift? You know, as Nico got to sort of get on board with it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but if if Nico knows that Xander's not with him, because I think it was weird for Nico that he'd be dating her, and so would Xander, and that's someone that he knows. Mm. But now that she's not dating him, would would he be interested now? I don't know. Like, where does this? Where yeah, does I suppose go now? Xander's not going to like that. No, but this it, it doesn't for me. It doesn't necessarily mean the storyline with Stacey's over because. She's still here, isn't she? We haven't seen her this week, though, have we? Apart from when he said that he wasn't interested in her anymore. No, yeah. 
I suppose if if that is done, we'll need to see or hear about her leaving her post or something, won't we, at the gym? Yeah, yeah. To to really draw a line on that. Otherwise, we're to assume she's down there. Yeah. Uh, working away every day. Mm. Mm, odd one. Yeah, it is an odd one. I don't know if that is the line under the polyamory stuff. Um, I, I think if it is, I think it's a bit quick personally. Mm. Um, I know, I know, I know. We couldn't have really tortured Xander any longer. No. Um, but I think if we'd have seen, if it was going to prolong and Stacey was going to stay around, I feel like we could have maybe seen Xander giving it a bit of a go, seeing him with multiple people, seeing her, and you know, and and, and watching that sort of tussle between the two of them. Yeah. A bit longer. Yeah. Um, the fact that we haven't seen that is sort of is saying to me that we're sort of moving on from it. Yeah, and we're not seeing Xander go on any other dates, are we? So he's told Stacey he's not interested in, in dating her because he can't handle the, you know, the polyamory side of the relationship. That's fine. But we've not seen him have a little... We've seen this off the off the screen one, haven't we, with the breakfast that didn't seem to go that well. But he's not had any other dates with anybody else. This is what made this storyline really strange. We didn't see her with anybody else. We didn't see him with anybody else. So they were talking about this polyamory relationship when it wasn't poly from our point of view. It was just them two all the time. Mm. That's why it's mm. really odd. I don't know. Mm. I think he needs to get another date with someone else that we don't know. Or I don't. That's the thing with this, with the cast being so small. Who else? There's nobody else really that he can date that's single. So he needs. They need to bring in someone else for him. Bring in someone new. Yeah. 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 Mm. Unless he just goes cougar and starts chatting Rue up or something. Oh, <laughs> she'd eat him for breakfast. Yeah, she, she could do a lot worse. <laughs> she could do a lot. She has done a lot worse. Let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or Marilyn. I don't know. Marilyn and Xander yeah. from the neck. Imagine. Imagine. I am imagining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo. Um. <laughs> Well, over at the hospital, Brie, she, you remember she'd reported Dean for domestic abuse or domestic violence against mm. Ziggy, yeah. projecting everything onto Ziggy, basically, Ziggy and Dee. And, you know, mm. she was speaking about the bruises. We touched on this last week, didn't we? Um, I'm a mechanic. The, the, <laughs> yeah. I just um, fell down the bloody stairs. What do you think? Where do you think the bruises have come from? I was crossing all this. I know, I know. Would well, you remember me saying to you, this will be interesting now to see what happens because we know that Cash knows. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cash yeah. is waiting for Bree to be ready. Um, so I was really interested. I was honestly watching with such intention, you know, mm. such in, um, you know, I, I, Cash comes to the hospital and he's, you know, and he's asking her what's what's the situation. And you're hearing her saying, all the signs are there. You know, mm. I've been, you know, he's controlling behaviour. It's textbook, she says, she calls it, doesn't she? And yeah. you're thinking, everything you should be recognising, well, she is recognising herself, that's why she's saying it. Mm. Um, and you, and, and I'm just, I'm honestly, I'm transfixed on Cash's face at this moment, just thinking, mm. what would you be thinking in that situation? You can't say anything. No, you know? he didn't give anything away, actually, did he? Because he went and spoke to Remy after that, didn't he? But he didn't give mm. anything away when he spoke to Bree. He was just like, okay, explain to me. Because he did sort of say, are you sure? Like, I know Diggy and... Diggy? Diggy and Dean? Ziggy and Dean. I know mm. them. Um, <laughs> are you sure this is what, what you've seen? Where's the evidence? You know, what what is, what is it that you think's happening? He didn't really f- believe her, did he? But he did, he did it yeah. in a way that was like... Not, I don't believe you because I know something about you, but just, I know these people. So if you think this is true, you're going to have to give me some evidence because I can't just go straight in there and, yeah. you know. Yeah, he did it really well, didn't he? He did, I thought, yeah. yeah. I thought he handled it really well. He was doing um, his job, like he was investigating because he had to, but I feel like under the surface he was thinking, I don't believe this, but if they can, you know, if there's something to it, I've got to investigate it, but I don't, you know, I'm doing it yeah. because it's my job, not because I think it's true. And that was sort of the undercurrent of his questioning, wasn't it? There's that moment, yeah. you know, he ta- he he and um, Brie go to her to 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 to, to Ziggy's bed, you know, yeah. and she's absolutely clueless, and she's all, "You're safe. You don't have to be scared anymore." Yeah, she's like, you know? "What?" 
Yeah, and it all goes a bit insane quite quickly because Dean and Mac arrive, um, mm-hmm. you know, and it all goes a bit nuts. Absolutely, in, honestly, such intense scenes, you know. Mm. Me and you have been really nervous about this storyline blowing up and about mm. how it's going to happen. Um, and, I mean, even more so, and we'll come on in a moment, but... Um, you know, Max Mac said, there, what exactly are you supposed to have seen? You know, and she's, mm. she, everything's getting a bit irate, you know, and, and, you know, Ziggy's just like, what the hell are you trying to say? Dean's pushed me down the stairs. And, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, she, I thought your job was to heal people, not tear them apart. Lines like this. And I was just like lapping mm. this up thinking, oh, my God. This yeah. is mad. Ziggy's demanding another doctor. She's just kicking her out. I want a different doctor. Mm. None of it will make a blind bit of difference. And I love Cash sort of, obviously he's got to remove Dean out of there, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, it, this sort of, when I talk about the undercurrent on his questioning, he's got him back at the police station and he's sort of saying, look, we're talking AVO here. We're talking. Mm. And even the way he questioned him, not necessarily mm. what he said, because like you said, he was doing his job. Mm. Even the way he was questioning, he was, I felt like he was trying to let Dean know he knew it was all poppycock. Yeah, absolutely. I think he was just giving him a chance to calm down because we know Dean's like a bull in a china shop with stuff like this, don't we? He just kicks off. And mm. him him kicking off to Bree and, you know, showing that aggressive behaviour is going to absolutely do him no favours in this situation. It's going to make him look like an abusive person, even though he's not one, because he's just got a really big temper. Um, he's mm. not violent or anything like that, but he has got a temper. So I think it was Cash sort of saying, look, mate, you need to talk to me. You need to calm down. This isn't going to go away unless you do those things. So you need to tell me your side and you need to calm down. Mm. Um, and then and then we can fix this you know I think he was trying to help him but Dean was just so cross he wasn't hearing it was he yeah yeah and 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 that you know and um he says you know that this he's, this interview will be over as soon as you start talking you know you, yeah I've not interviewed him yet he says doesn't yeah. he you know can't can't get anywhere mm. no he doesn't want him on it. tape kicking off, does he? That's what it is. He wants to he wants yeah. to interview him on tape. He doesn't want to interview him while he's irate and shouting and screaming. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not going to do it. He knows it's not going to do any favours and he knows he's not that kind of guy. So he's trying to help him. But Dean's just he stubborn, is. isn't he? He is. <laughs> he's been told he's got to stay away from Ziggy, sleeping mm. in the car. Um, and I, I was thinking that they were going to end up at the motel together, you know, next door room to each other. <laughs> I was thinking, oh God, this could be really awful. <laughs> Bumping into each other, going to get some ice down the corridor or something. Like, you, <laughs> you, your fault. I'm stuck in this motel. Well, you're abusive. You, I was thinking, oh God, Drango. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that would have been good though? It would have been, a, yeah, a good telly, but I don't think it would have helped Dean any, at all. I think sleeping in the car and calming down probably did him the world of good. Whilst this has happened, obviously Remy's had to go and have a chat with Bree mm. and made her realise a few things, hasn't he? You know, Cash went to him, um, didn't he, first and said, look, mm. mate, this is really serious. The stuff that she's accusing Dean of, you know, it's going to ruin his life. Is there anything you need to tell me about Bree that might, influence or might explain why she's mm. made these accusations so i thought that was really clever actually yeah again here's another chance here's another yeah. chance you know before because yeah. he'd not done anything he'd not charged dina out at that point it was sort no. of interview stage mm. and very quickly brie sees sense mm. doesn't yeah. she you know um i was wrong about ziggy and dean i was projecting Mm. Um, and she sort of has this sort of breakdown moment with Remy, you know, I, I wish someone would do this for me. Yeah. And I'm thinking. Do you though? You, you could do this for you. You know. But I don't think that's true. Imagine, you know, when Eden went to speak to Cash the other week and said, oh, mm. I've, got a, I've got a friend, hypothetically, that's got an abusive husband and, you know, she doesn't know what to do and all that sort of stuff. If at that point, you know, Eden had reported that officially, or if if Remy had, you know, when Remy saw her with a black eye and a split lip, that was evidence. He could have gone to Cash at that point and said, look at her face. Her husband did that, investigate it. If he'd done that, Brie wouldn't have been happy. Absolutely. She'd have been livid. 
She didn't live it because we've seen her tonight blow up over something else. So I just don't believe that she would have been cool with him getting in, interfering like that. No, no. Um, I just feel like you could, she, she's now in a position to do that herself. She knows. Yeah. She's got she's got support network around her. You yeah. know, I mean, Remy reiterates his support to her in this very conversation, you know, um, that we're talking about. And she, he's out of the way. She knows it's she's identified that it's bad that she wants out. I just feel like what's stopping you now, girl? Mm. You know? Yeah. It, it, do you want to be rescued or do you like being a victim? I know this is awful to say. Mm. And I don't mean like, do you like being the victim of domestic violence? I just mean, do you like... Like, she doesn't, not the right word. I don't think she wants to be rescued. I don't think she was no. willing to be rescued. I don't no. think that yeah. she wanted a shining, shining knight in, you know, shining armor coming in and, and sweeping her up and saying, "Oh, I will fix this for you." I don't think she wanted that because, no, on even though she's in this relationship with, with Jacob, where he's got the upper hand on a lot of things, she's actually quite an independent, outgoing woman on her own you know which is that turmoil I think that she's got going on that with him she's she's not herself she's a bit timid and a bit unconfident and she kind of she's pandas to him doesn't she but when she's in her yeah. work you know in the hospital she's in control she's independent she's doing stuff she's making literally life or death decisions for people and she's handling all that pressure so she's got this like dual personality hasn't she really she has you're right and she proves your point there she proves it later in the week because she, she has then gone to the police and given a statement hasn't she yeah. um don't think it was under any sort of duress she she's sort of succumbed to the idea that she needs to take action now mm. um and an avo has been issued to jacob who as we know is currently in western australia working okay and later in the week we revisit them and she's not heard anything since this mm. statement and she's gone to chase it up and found out that he's been arrested and he's now he's now he's been given bail yeah. so he's back out and she's not heard from him and that sends her into a panic then he eventually phones her mm. and she answers the phone and Aww. and that proves what you're you, you're saying about her not being ready to be rescued yeah. you know because she's still making herself available to him yeah which is goes against all common sense she's not a stupid person she's a smart lady but she makes stupid decisions when it comes to jacob unfortunately mm. Mm. and he's not happy is he on that no. phone i did have to roll my eyes a bit about this because he hasn't been in contact with her yet he's been arrested he's been charged he's been to a hearing he's been bailed he's been given an avo she finds all this out from Cash after it's happened. He still hasn't been in contact with her. I just don't find that very believable. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, once we know all this has happened, he then rings her. I would have thought he would have called her, you know, as soon as he could after he got arrested, wouldn't you? If he was, if he was going to break the AVO anyway, he would yeah. have done it a lot sooner, wouldn't he? He'd yeah. be ringing up and going, I've just been arrested. What on earth's going on? What have you said? You know, I just find yeah. it a bit strange that all of that has happened, which would probably take a couple of days, <laughs> I'd imagine. Unless WA are really, you know, really quick on the old legal stuff. but Yeah, unless, unless they've had him in custody interviewing him for dates. Can they do that? Um, is it 24 hours? I don't think they can for that charge. I'd be surprised. That's more like murder, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Speak. <laughs> I'd be there torturing someone for shoplifting me. <laughs> Put on the electric chair. <laughs> oh, God. I'm scared. <laughs> Um, mm, yeah, I thought I was. We, we we were texting during this episode, weren't we? Earlier, sort of saying, mm. Is it because he was traveling? I'm still a bit like he's just going to jump out of a corner one day, you yeah. know? Like, yeah, uh, has she not heard he, from him he because he was traveling there. back? He is still there, isn't he, though? Because he's been he's been to court and he's been charged and he's been all that, he's been out put on bail. So, he, at some point, he has been there, but where is he now when he's calling her? That's the question. Is he uh, yeah, in the airport? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and he, might, he might have a hearing. He might, he might, part of his bail conditions might be to go and check in, but yeah, I think he'll ignore it. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's very smart either. No, I think he'll ignore it. Yeah. Ooh, I think we're going to see him. Yeah, we'll find out in first look um, yeah. this week, but I think we're going to see him very soon. And honestly, I think yeah. I'm not going to sleep a wink. <laughs> <laughs> he's quite scary, isn't he? I'm quite scared, mm. Jacob. So. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Someone else to be scary of. John mm. and Justin. Really? Trying to put together. <laughs> <laughs> trying to put together a uh, golf team. Good grief. I've actually quite Give enjoyed Give me strength. It. <laughs> That's what Mr. Stewart said. He did. God, give me strength. I was like, yes, Mr. Stewart, you're talking for all of us here, mate. We're all feeling it. <laughs> I've quite enjoyed this, you know. Have you? This, um, yeah, I've not hated oh. it. Oh, come I'm, on then. Uh, Turn me because I'm not, I'm not uh, loving this. <laughs> Well, obviously, top of the week, we learn that because Justin's now got this vendetta with John, this sort of mm. funny rivalry with John, hasn't he? Um, yeah. And he's a, he's talked at Theo, not let him get a word in edgeways and recruited him, unbeknownst that Theo has already agreed to be on John's team sometime before. John's had T-shirts printed, <laughs> big up Palmer's putters. I love John. I, um, I think storylines like this suit him down to a T. Mm -hmm. um, although I wouldn't mind a brain tumour and forest fires. I do quite like that side of him as well. Oh, Arson John. I loved Arson yeah, John. Yeah. Hoodie. Hoodie John. Bad boy John. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, mm. we called yeah. this last week on the podcast. We called it that Justin and, and John would be fighting over Theo. Yeah, we, we did. We did. Yeah. We did. You, you did more. more. To be, we to be it's, a team, it's a team effort <laughs> <laughs> it's no i <laughs> um what i didn't like though was justin hmm. proper guilt in theo the poor impressionable lad oh my god uh, he really laid it on thick i don't I have don't. a son yeah I what did. <laughs> i'm gonna play golf and i'm gonna play guitar and i want to do all the stuff oh no it was just <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I just thought, whoa, he can't really not now, can he? The poor thing. And then later on, John's like, He's got a daughter was... we don't bloody see. Can we just say that? Oh, yeah. What is old Shandy up to? No, I mean, Justin's daughter. What's oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ava. Yeah. I thought you meant John's daughter. No, Justin. Justin was all like, Oh, if I had a son, make out like he hasn't got any children. I was like, You've got a daughter that you don't do anything with. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's golf just a man's game. Yeah. Obviously well, not. I think Rose is going to uh, kill it by the looks of things. Hopefully. Um, secret golf. Mm. I, ju I just look and later on the week, John goes, Well, Theo's not even your family. You're just a hanger on her. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah. You know, he's just camping out at his auntie's house. Um, <laughs> I loved yeah. Kirby in this. I thought Kirby finally she's oh. cutting that cutting that card with Theo yes. and she's going on her own. I was going to say that to you that we've been moaning for weeks that she hasn't got her own storyline unless she's just Theo's add-on. So I'm hoping this will flesh her out and that she won't be just oh this is Theo's girlfriend again. You know she's going to get this is Theo Palmer's putters. Uh, sorry Kirby. This is Palmer's putters Kirby. This is yeah not just yeah. Not hanging yeah. off Theo's side. Yeah, yeah I was quite yeah, pleased yeah. about that. Fine. Yeah, I was. I was. I thought of you. Thought of you. I thought, yeah, I thought of I you. I that. was like, oh, which one is Theo's side? I'm chuffed about this. <laughs> um, do we think we're going to see Gerald from the Surf Club Committee? Do you think? We're I hope so. They've mentioned him twice now. So the, the other day, Gerald. So Marion said to Justin, "Oh, I think Gerald's looking for a team," and I was like, "Oh." We're going to get to see Gerald. And then I think it was on Friday's episode, Marilyn said, well, everyone knows who Gerald is. And I was like, we don't. Come on, bring out the elusive Gerald. I'm dying to meet Gerald. It'd be so funny if, Ger if we finally meet Gerald and then he wins the Skoda or whatever it's going to be. Oh, yeah. Mm. Could, could do. Because mm. the car. The car. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm imagining it as Mr Bean's little mini or like the, the trotter's three-wheeler or something. It'll be dreadful, won't it? I hope so. <laughs> John will win it and he'll be stuck with it. <laughs> I hope it's not some flashy Merc. That'll annoy me. I want it to be a really crappy car. Well, Marilyn's confident they're going to raise the, the 40k as a result of this prize now. I just don't see how. How many teams are involved and how many spectators are coming in? How much are they charging these people? I, I think they could have probably got 10k out of this and then done it four times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. see how they can make 40k off them. I'm still baffled by the maths. Yeah. 
inflation must be bad down there. So <laughs> yeah, I mean it's bad here, but it's, blimey. Oh yeah. I'm sitting in the dark here recording this podcast. I know I'm sitting right, I'm sitting lighting the, the candle for warmth. <laughs> 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 Got my fingerless gloves on. No, a tea light candle. <laughs> <laughs> Bad gloves. <laughs> so, yeah. good luck, all. Good luck. Yeah. I'll be interested mm. to see how it pans out. And are we going to get a new location? Like, so this golf, golfing green, or what, what do they, what do they, I don't know anything about golf. What's it called that they play on golf course? Course, are we gonna, yeah. Are we going to get to see it? Are we going to, or is it going to be one of these things that we just hear about it later? Because we don't have a golf course in Home and Away, do we? So is this another no, but I imagine location? It, yeah, I imagine there's plenty around there. There must be, but we don't um, get to go off. I mean, the last time we went off on location was with um, Heather at the creepy all-girls school, wasn't it? So, yeah. God rest her. I wonder what she's up to. Marilyn's she's in, she's in, she's in Psych Asylum, isn't she? She's in the home, the... Um, the loony bin, I think, isn't she? Ah, the lin's so over it. <laughs> <laughs> over it. <laughs> over it. Oh, my God. Maybe she's having a house party. That's what she's doing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, Flick, she's not having a house party just yet. She's saving that for the wedding day. Um, <laughs> but she is avoiding Eden this week because Eden's trying to get her to try dresses on and get a move on because how many weeks till the wedding, Sophie? Four, I think. Is it now? Or is it three now? Oh, yeah, it's got to be less than three. It was four last time. Yeah, it must be three. Yeah, I think it's it's four three, minus yeah. one's three, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Maths 101. <laughs> um, and um, she reluctantly gets dragged back home where mm. Eden just, you know. Well, she didn't reluctantly get dragged back home, did she? Because well, she, no. she got sort of, oh, yes, she was, was on a promise, I think. Yes, sorry. I stand corrected. <laughs> I was getting very jealous. <laughs> this one, like, Hello. We were straight on to each other, weren't we? Yeah. Tane's in, Tane and Flick are at Salt having lunch and he has other ideas. Mm. And he just takes a phone call, doesn't he? If it's Eden, isn't it? Telling him to get her back at the yeah. house. And he says something like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to manage that. He managed it pretty well. Well, you needn't ask twice. Oh. And I texted you and I said, the way Tani kisses Flick. Mm. <gasps> My knees. I know. I was living vicariously. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you watched it? Uh... Honestly, I thought it was filthy. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was um it was worth rewinding, let's put it that way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can't deny those two don't the chemistry of the actors. You just can't yeah. deny it, can you? Um, when you compare yeah. them to Dean and Ziggy, it's just and Dean and Ziggy are meant to be a couple in real life, aren't <laughs> they? Say, so, watch what you say. Woof. There's no chemistry there on screen. Hopefully it's all off screen. But um have you seen they're over here on Insta? I thought they were in Japan. Aren't they in Japan? Oh and well this morning they were at Loch Ness, so work that out. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Are they still both, both got different hair? I think Dean's gone blonde and Ziggy's gone like a ginger colour, hasn't she? Uh, yeah. Have you noticed that? So <laughs> that's like a whole. Every time, every, and actor leaves on the way, they're all going blonde. I think it's like a breakup. You know, when you break up with someone and then you dye your hair blonde? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you leave home and away and then you get the bleach. <sighs> yeah. And that's what it is. Like, I'm allowed to make a decision about my hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what can we do? Yeah. So, um, yeah, this kiss has just thrown us again. I know, sorry. And he manages sorry. to lure her back with his, I mean, like you say, promise. Mm. And she's ambushed right into wedding dress on a rail in the living room. You will <laughs> try these on at home. Now, what are your thoughts on wine after champagne? I'm not sure that would sit too lightly, personally. Uh, no, I'd rather have another bottle of champagne. But, you know, the mm. budget for the wedding is probably in their, <laughs> in their mind. I don't know. They get absolutely arsehole and both try wedding dresses on, don't they? And it's the only way she can get Flick in them. Because mm. this seesaw that Flick's on with this wedding is getting a little tiresome. 
Um, I don't know why I don't know why we're planning a wedding that she doesn't want. This is what I don't understand. And I kind of tweeted this this week. I was like, it's 2023. You don't have to wear a white, boring wedding gown with that looks like a net curtain anymore. You can wear literally anything you want. Why doesn't she wear something that she actually likes? I don't get this at all. Especially at the license of a beach wedding. Yeah. You know, it gives you it gives you that license to. You don't need a ball gown. You don't yeah. need to wear a ball gown on, on sand. I don't understand this. Actually, it'll just stick to you. So you're best off not. I, do you not think this week's been a bit of a turning point for Flick? I do. Mm. I think, I, I feel like this happened. She didn't really, I expected her to just weird out about the dresses because the dresses is even more symbolic than the blooming invites. And she went skits at them. Yeah. And I just, I was ready and bracing myself for just like, a oh, not again, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't watch this again, you know. Actually, I mean, champagne and wine would have helped. But yeah. she sort of ended up in the, you know, enjoying the dress a bit. And then Tane comes home and, you know, and they're, they're having fun and he sees, he sees her in the wedding dress. And I'm not sure if that's foreshadowing bad news for this wedding, because I still mm. believe, mm-hmm. I still believe it's not right. No. Something's not right. And um, Tane's had some news while he's been out. Yeah. He's had a phone call from New Zealand. He's come home all sad and forlorn because... You know, Gemma's called. She's not going to be coming. Mm. Neither are me and Chloe. Woohoo! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the excuse is any good. Gemma's just started a new job. Sorry, I can't come. To be fair, uh, they, they didn't give people very much time. And they haven't given themselves enough time to plan this wedding, never mind other people. But to expect mm. somebody to get an invite four weeks before the wedding and then afford a plane ticket... And a new outfit. And all, I just don't... It's, suppose, mm, yeah. It's mm, convenient. So. It's a convenient excuse because if it was in six months, why would Gemma not be there? Do you know what I mean? But it, because it's in four weeks, it's convenient that You can Gemma... sort of explain it away. Yeah, I yeah. suppose so. Yeah. And me and Chloe, um, we, just, we, just can't, we just can't face the bay. So no. yeah. we can't face you either. Um <laughs> <laughs> and he oh, sort of he sort of sulks off outside to the sex pond. Um, I don't even understand how close he is to Mia and Chloe. Anyway, I get that he'd be close to Gemma more, but Mia and Chloe they were out of Ari's life for ages. They only sort of came back for a year or so, didn't they? Yeah, and the way he's talking, anyway, it's it it's they're mentioned because I'm assuming that's for us. Yes. You know, we, yeah. their characters, we know, but yeah. and then, but then they're sort of mentioned and done. After that, it's only Gemma he talks about and the family, as mm. if extended family yeah. back in New Zealand. Um, yeah. He doesn't really go on about them again. Does he? I think that was more of a line for us, just to explain to us where Mia is. You know, yeah, the wife of his brother. Um, yeah. For five minutes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, and then. <laughs> I remember I found a clip the other day, you know, and I was clearing my phone out of all. There was a clip of me just like going off of one like, did they even <laughs> sign the paperwork? I was like, oh, delete this. <laughs> Is it even legal? Oh, I remember that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found it on my phone the other day. You know, I've been oh, chopping no. bits up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he sits out in the back and the lighting's all gorgeous and this chilling out by the pool and she comes out with that wedding dress i loved this scene but i'm a bit of a sucker for this type of stuff you know and she sits on him and drapes the wedding dress over him, and they're just doing coupley things you know giggling and covering him up with the veil and you know mm. and just think just silly little coupley things that make but all these little like probably not even in the script right yeah all make you buy into their relationship more don't they yeah i just think yeah. these two are just so perfectly matched yeah and they're my yeah. favorite couple for a long long time um and i really hope i really hope they are happy um when we eventually get there um and he he, he admits doesn't he you know he he, he gives her the news mm. you know what he's had and he admits that this has made him feel homesick and i just melted i know i did feel sorry for him um he did he doesn't often get upset or down does he Tane yeah. he like he, he's quite happy-go-lucky considering all the crap that's happened to him mm. 
you know, it's never it's never really beaten him. He's never been down for long. But this did seem to kick him, didn't it? Really, it did for quite a while as well. He couldn't he took, he couldn't get out of the funk, could he? But mm. again, you know, families is probably the most important thing to him. Yeah, you know, and um, fast forward a little bit, you know, um, she's trying to cheer him up. She wants to do something nice for him, so she has a chat with Neek. Um, and Neek's done the same thing, taking him for a beer, <laughs> you know, like yeah. come on, <laughs> like boys do. Yeah. Um, and um, so she has a chat with Neek, and she said, "I want to do something for him, something that will connect him again with home." Mm. And ten out of ten, so for you and your crystal ball here. I know another one. Wants to translate the. She wants yeah. to do her wedding vows in Maori. Mm. Uh, Bang on the nose there. Yeah. Well, the, the the synopsis for that episode was made it kind of easy to guess, I think. I don't think it was necessarily that I'm psychic. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, this was really nice, actually. I really liked this. The, and showing her and Neek together, you know, and, and working on it together and her, yeah. her being really part of the family now and being tight with Nico as well. I really liked this, actually. It was quite cheesy, but I did love it. Yeah, I agree, um, and and it, and I think that's a real turning point for them now, yeah. because it's 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 sort of flipped it over upside down. Now, rather than Tane being the one that's comforting and trying to yes. be there for Flick, it's now the other way round, and and Flick now hasn't time to have meltdowns because she's got to do something for him. Yes, you know, that's, that's true. Yeah, probably yeah. what she needs right now to make her get on with this planning, and she mm. seems to then embrace. She's ticking mm. off the list, you know. <laughs> she's she's like, I love bossing this wedding business, you know. Like mm. she's she's starting to embrace it more, um, and I just think you know, it's a nice thing she needs to do for him, and 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 yeah, I think this is her now getting on with the wedding on board fully. Yeah. And doing something yeah. for him, but yeah, it's it's sort of reversed roles, if you like. You're right. Yeah, I hadn't I hadn't looked at it that way, but she does come across as quite sort of self centered, doesn't she? A lot of the time, and a lot of it's about oh, how I feel about the wedding and how I feel. And you're right. She she could have easily still been in that place, thinking about the wedding dresses and everything else, but she didn't. She she saw that he was down, and she dropped all of her melodrama and went right. Well, how can I make it better for him? Mm. And it, it sort of ties in what, with what she says to um, Eden, you know, when Eden's saying, well, what are you going to say in your vows? Tell me why you're with him, you know, because she says something like, he lets me be myself and he Is actually were... loves me. Uh, for it. Shaking yeah. it off. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you wrote your vows? Did you do a bit of that? <laughs> God, no. 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 Oh, okay. What did I do? Oh, God. Um, did you did you just recite the Home and Away theme song? <laughs> you know we belong together. You and I forever no. and ever. That's what they should have had as their their wedding vows. They're perfect yeah. for wedding vows. Yeah, we'd have loved that, wouldn't we? <laughs> have a break the fourth wall. Um, <laughs> no, but I, we had a massive conversation about walking down the aisle to the theme song. I can't believe I've just said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I think it didn't happen then. No. Oh. Well, there's always no. a renewal, vow renewal. Yeah, ten years. I've already promised I, all our friends it. So. When's that? When? When's ten years? Want to buy? Want to buy me hat? Oh, that's quite near. Okay, so I want to. I want to see the vow readings or or the walk down to the aisle. I want to see the the home and away incorporated into that, please. Uh, you're not coming. If I'm invited, I'll be there with bells on. <laughs> Absolutely, but yeah. We'll have to we'll have to make, check the time of the ceremony in case we've got to record a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't do it on a Friday. <laughs> the Fridays are out, okay? <laughs> Saturday morning, we're uploading it. Not a Saturday morning. You're going to have to schedule it around the pod schedule, obviously. Everyone's like, who gets married on a Tuesday? Right. <laughs> and it's got to be either before half past six or after half past six so I can watch Home and Away <laughs> as well. So you have a lot of thinking to do, actually. So, yeah. yeah. It's really hard to schedule a wedding. 
Um, <laughs> well, Eden, you know, we're talking about Eden, the dresses. She seems to have chosen one of these dresses off the Number rack. three. Was it? Oh, I missed that bit. No, was that the one option... she was like jumping around in? I don't know. She said option number three, but I don't actually know which they were calling number three because I thought the one that she tried on first was the one that she liked the most. I'm not sure. Was option number three the, the short one that Aidan had on with her black socks? She's not getting married in that, surely. You can see what she had for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it does fit with the beach, beachy vibe, though, doesn't it? I don't, like, I don't think the ball gown net curtain one was the... I don't know. It's the beach vibe, no. Um, mm, well, whatever, it doesn't really matter, whichever one mm. she picked anyway, because Eden's loaded the van up mm. and uh, so, someone's nicked him. Right, you can leave your door open, <laughs> you can leave your windows open, yep. and no one will touch a thing, mm-hmm. but you leave your, cat, you leave your van door unlocked and off they go. They've lifted the wedding dresses, been yeah. stolen. Didn't see this coming. Shocked. The amount of times they mentioned the 12 grand wedding dresses and how she'd be in so much trouble <laughs> if she didn't get them back. I didn't for a minute think they would get stolen or ruined or, you know. <laughs> or not make it back to the shop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't see that coming. I mean, John, Neighbourhood Watch, John. Is, yeah, things he? are It's a bit preoccupied, isn't he? And he, mm. him himself, he's a vandal. Yes. You know, he smashed your windows last week. Yeah. This This week... He's not even seen this happen next door. No, no, opposite. Oh, no, next door, you're right. Yes. The van seemed to move. She was loading the... Um, did you notice this? She it was did. loading the... She, Someone parked uh, it properly. <laughs> the, no, it was in... The, I'm sure think, it was in different houses. Oh, was it? I thought it was... Um, when the, they were loading the van, it was on, like, the drive but sideways. And then when she went to take the van back to the shop with the dresses... It looked like it was parked on the drive properly, like someone had moved it. Right. I Maybe I've got that on. wrong. Let's both watch it later. I think, <laughs> I, if, God, if, unless you're living life, you know. Um, <laughs> what life? <she's>, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was completely different driveways. I think was the it? first time mm-hmm. when they were loading it, Yeah. I, I think that was on the front of P- the Parata house. Casa yeah. Parata, yeah. And then when she f- noticed they were missing, she mm. was o- over at the band house. She was oh. coming up the drive of the band house. Oh, I missed that completely then. I just thought someone had parked it properly in between stealing the dresses. No. So the van's gone across the cul-de-sac somehow. That's I might be bizarre. wrong. Maybe the handbrake was off. <laughs> I and it's been know. parked on the drive. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I, have a look later. I will, yeah. Just tell me I'm not going mad. But it, it was in a completely different house. That's bizarre. Mm. Okay. Notice these things. They've gone missing. Oh, and then it's right old excuse for her to nip down to Cash and say, can you come and help me? Yeah, off the record, yeah. Cash. Mm, yeah. Doesn't want, mm. doesn't want the popo involved officially. Mm, no. Um, and uh, can you come over and we'll have a burger? We'll eat. We'll eat. Do you need a fork for your burger? <laughs> do you know if she, she had a burger box and she gave him a fork? I thought, what's he going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice. Oh, maybe they get chips. Did they get chips as well? I don't know. Maybe. You'd eat them with your fingers, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> Very posh. Oh, yeah. And then um, the scouring eBay for these stolen wedding dresses and just mm. sort of, you know, looking and smelling. I think she smelled him. <laughs> Maybe he was wearing, you know, one million. Yes. Pack of a bound. Other you know, after shaves are available. <laughs> yeah. But not advertised by Home and Away alumni. <laughs> Is it is it Paco Rabanne that he advertises? Is he, he, one I can't of them. remember. Yeah, mm. something like mm. that, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, and um, they're sort of looking at each other a little too long there, aren't they? Well, there was a kiss nearly, wasn't there? But Flick interrupted. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, oh, what's going on here then? I was like, well, if you just waited a second, <laughs> I was a bit annoyed. <laughs> like, Come on. <laughs> mm. Go back Kisses. out and take, take your shoes off. I know. Yeah. Kisses interrupt us. And that was it. 
Mm. The Friday. I, do we want them together? I do, actually. Coming. I do. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I, I, I'm not convinced that Cash is exciting enough for Eden, but I do kind mm. of want to see where this is going. Well, she, what was the line she said? Um, you know, something about, you know, the, the one thing, the one person I need help from mm. is the man that makes me lose my head or something. Yeah, she said the one person I need to help with is the, is the one person that makes me lose my mind. That was it. Yeah. I mean, she, she was sort of laying it out for him, weren't she? Mm. I mean, she was sort of saying, come on, sister. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm game if you are. Oh, I've sort of grown fond of Eden over the last month or yeah. two. Yeah. I like you say, it'll either do one or two things. It'll drag up previous yeah. spats and things mm. from days gone, or you know, it'll bore her to sin and. They're just yeah. a very odd couple, aren't they? When you think about the context of the storyline that they're in at the moment, you know, she's basically blagged 12 grand's worth of, of stock from this shop, pretending that she's a stylist or something to try and... And she's apparently put a one grand deposit down. Don't know where the band have got that money from. I know, yeah. Go. I was going to... Yeah, they were skint at one point, weren't they? Yeah. So there's that gone on the old credit card, maybe. But then with him being a very by-the-book copper, how does that how does that personality match up you know hers with this like oh blaggy blaggy I've, I've essentially stolen some stuff because i've managed to persuade somebody to give it to me under false pretenses and he's a very play play by the rules cop mm. it's, it's quite an odd pairing i kind of want them to rub off each other in in a good way like i want her to loosen him up and make him a bit more interesting and yeah. i want him him to kind of ground her a little bit i think but yeah. not too oh. not too much not like not, not make her boring, but, you know, it'd be nice to see her with somebody. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. They might bring each other, the best out of each other and, and, and complement. Opposites do attract, they say, yeah. don't they? Yeah. It was really obvious when, um, you know, tonight when they were sending the message to the seller of the wedding dresses. You know, oh, like, yeah. Send, yeah. Send me your addy. I mean, I've not heard that for years. Um, <laughs> and... Um, and uh, she goes, right, what happens now? Do we go stake it out and bust some doors in? And he's like, nope, no, this is it. <laughs> and you're like, she's like, oh, that's yeah. very exciting. I thought that's quite an interesting mm. sort of reflection on the two personalities, really. It is, yeah. So is that going to work or not? I don't know. But I'm I'm willing to try it out and see how it happens, see what goes on. Right, Si, it's time for your say on the bay. Mm. Excited? Always. <laughs> Always. Good, good. <laughs> right, so this week I'm going to be talking to you about a, an article that you may or may not have already seen. I'm guessing you have. Um, that it's, been, it's been on a few um, news websites and stuff, actually, but I'm talking about the one specifically on digitalspy.com. Okay. And it's written by Katie Francis. It was published on the 5th of Feb. And it says, this is the title of the article, Home and Away's Australian Network Explains 35th Anniversary Snub. And then the subheadline mm-hmm. is, It's Bad Manners to Ask a Soap Its Age. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this? <laughs> no, I saw the headline, but I never read the article. I didn't read oh, didn't the, um, no. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I will, I'll tell you about it, because we've had oh, people talking about it online, so I thought it might be a good one mm. to start with. So just before we get into that, so if anybody that doesn't know about your say on the bay... Um, this is something that we talk about every week at the end of the main uh, podcast episode, um, where we talk about things that have been discussed on the hashtag, on Twitter, or anything that you've got in touch with us about. So you can tweet us at Coastal News Pod. Um, we've also got Instagram, which is the same handle. And we've also got an email account, which is coastalnewspod at gmail.com. So this week, a lot of the t- discussion on Twitter has been about this article. Um, so it says that this is not news to us it may be news to you that the soaps network seven so this is the network in australia so in the uk we watch um home away on channel five don't we or my five on the on five star any of those things that belong Uh. to channel five but in australia the network is called seven which is 
kind of confusing because it's another seven. number. Seven. yeah. <laughs> and it says that it, well, we had the 35th anniversary when Home Away turned 35 this year in January. And um, as part of that, when Home and Away went off air at Christmas for UK, for the UK audience, we were treated to lots of new, um, that's new old episodes so it was all these new episodes that were on the my five app but they're actually old yeah. episodes yeah. so there was there was 35 episodes that were released one for every year that home and away's been on air and it was one episode for each year so there was an episode for the first year which was the pilot episode an episode for the second year etc and we saw births deaths marriages everything weddings disasters you know we saw it all so we've actually in the uk we've acknowledged this 35th anniversary we've had these episodes on um, on my five and we've also had in the advert breaks on channel five we've had the the actors from the show doing little clips haven't we we've seen them on twitter as well they've been, these clips have been shared you know celebrating the 35th anniversary and introducing the the episodes to us you know these 35 episodes that got uploaded to my five we've seen these little clips as well that have been mm. that have been shot so we have acknowledged it here but apparently in australia on the network that owns home and away over there which is seven they haven't done the same kind of fanfare for this milestone um for this anniversary which is a bit strange so there's been a lot of people talking about that um and actually the I think he's the head of shed- scheduling. I can't say that word. Head of scheduling. I think it's a man. I don't know. Is Brooke a name? Is Brooke a man's name or a woman's name? It's probably a woman, isn't it? Don't know. I Brooke don't Hall. Know. I don't know. Man or man or woman? No idea. But someone called Brooke, Brooke Hall, who is the head of scheduling for Seven, they said that the the first week after January had its highest streamed episode ever, and the total is currently one million viewers. So he's saying that, or she's saying that it's really encouraging to see that this show is still really popular. So, you know, they're basically saying this this show is still really current. It's still popular. People are still watching it. Over a million streams, over a million views. Which is um, mega in ours. You which know. is mad. Yeah. So, you know, this is this is a really popular show. So why are we not celebrating the fact that it's reached this milestone? Mm. Um and basically what they've what this person, I'm gonna say person because I don't know whether it is a man or a woman. They said that it's what, it's <laughs> it's one of our most important shows, and it's often discussed. But the tricky thing is, and we may be reading this wrong, that it's a fine balance between going, this is a really important legacy brand, and also highlighting its age. And maybe that's overthinking it. But some people become so fickle now that they want a shiny new show, and there's there's nervousness about saying that a show's turning thirty five because they're worried that it's going to turn people off it because they're going to say, oh, that's really old. It's been on since before I was born. I'm not going to watch it. So this has sparked some some chats, as you can imagine, because by saying that they're mm. not highlighting the fact that it's 35 years old because they think people are fickle and they just want shiny and new, it's, it's, as you can imagine, that's ruffled some feathers on, on the old Twitter. Yes, I can imagine. Um, yeah, so I read you some... I can, go for it, yeah, have you got some there? And if That's you want to have been give, saying. give your opinion, or should we should we go and have a look at what people? We can are do saying? a bit of both. Sh- shall I shall I give my initial reaction? Because that's the first time I've heard that article. Yeah. Um, if you'd like it. Um, <laughs> sounds okay. Mm. I hear what you're saying. The fact that you're justifying it. It's your top-rated show outside of the news. It's never been a secret that it's home and away. Does amazing things down under. Um, outside of the news, it is often there, always in the top ten. You know, of the of the overnights. I think it does. I mean, I I follow this quite closely mm. um, because being an international viewer, you know, you uh, and and be, and being you know mad fans like we are, you sort of look into things a bit deeper, don't you? Yeah. Um, so I, I I know it's a popular show. Um, and the, the the attitude in this area isn't something that is that is shocking to me, mm. and something that isn't um, it isn't news to me. We had a lot of this around the thirtieth anniversary, five years prior, where I think 
because here in the UK, our soaps in the past for anniversaries have done some mad things, live episodes, you know, burnt the pub down, you know, mm. they've done these mad stunts. Um, I think there is a sort of expectation that Home and Away has and, and international soaps do the same. Yeah. Logistically, it's difficult when most of the countries that Home and Away is in all watch at different paces. And secondly, yeah. this this notion that they don't want to show its age probably says more about advertising and the business side of TV mm. and um, demos and all that stuff that, you know, people who need to pay the bills at the networks look at yeah. more than, um, you know, more than the show. You know, I, th- I think it yeah. says more about that. I think... It, it it's a shame, isn't it? Because we're so we we're such we're so fond of the show, but it's a yeah. money spinner. It's a money spinner. It's the cash it is. cow. It is, yeah. It 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 does like like you say. It does feel like a shame for the people that work on the show um, to to not market in any way, just because they they're worried about the audience turning off because it's it's not shiny new. I think that's quite insulting to say that we people are only interested in something that's new and shiny, and they wouldn't give it a chance. But it probably, yeah, you're probably right. But it probably says a lot about the Australian TV landscape. Oh, you know, maybe. we we don't we don't really understand, do we, from no. afar, no. what sort of going on down there. We sort of do we cherish history more here? Do we, mm. you know, do we celebrate it more? You know, it's I, from what little I've seen, and, and this is coming from a really sort of. Um, place of ignorance really I, I don't know you know I've never been not really paid too much interest outside of home and away but lots of reality tv you know and we've we've had that here but not to the same extent as like in the states for example mm. um and when you look at Netflix it's all about the big new yeah show things like the streamers are all chasing that big drama aren't they that big high budget thing yeah. are, are they looking down on it because it's a soap possibly you know, do, uh, yeah i just don't think they're cat- capitalizing is that the right word on this you know the first thing this person says this book haul the first week that the first episode back um after after the break in january had its highest streamed episode ever you know that's huge one million viewers in 2023 after it's been 35 years old i'd be using that as saying if you haven't seen it yet what have you been missing out on because this is 35 years old and it's still getting 100 million viewers it's still streaming that many per episode so if you if you're not if you're not on board look what you're missing you know i'd be using that as a kind of where have you been kind of yeah angle i don't know yeah Yeah. yeah, yeah. i don't know why they're not sort of using that into their advantage really rather than just being like oh they don't want to watch it because it's not shiny and new i just think that's really short-sighted it is the only thing i can think of is it's about advertisers it's Mm. about chase it's about chasing kids that's where the money is right and we've all we all witness it on tv even here it's Mm. about the demographics you've either got to go young where they're going to spend money on daft things and attract advertisers that will pay to get in front of young impressionable people right who have got a bit of spare money or you've got to go old and upmarket, and those mm-hmm. old and upmarket people don't watch soaps. Mm. So, you know that you know that that's where the money is on the advertisers, and it's a shame because I completely feel you're probably about to read things to mm. me from the fans. But if you've stuck with the show for decades, yeah, you sort of feel a little bit cheated because it's you know this you need to celebrate that legacy. Yeah. Um, not just chase new viewers yeah but then if you don't chase new viewers you don't yeah. have a legacy in the end yeah so that that balance that they're talking about i, I, I sort of sympathize with it but it does feel a little bit of a cop out at the same mm. time yeah yeah no i get that i, I can see it from both sides it, like you say it's disappointing for people that have been on board forever and they're just you know they want to celebrate this because it is it is quite a milestone it is really important to us um 
how many times do they say they sh- they don't bring characters back? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you know, characters never come back on Homeworld, and if they have, it's recent characters. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Th- there might be a different demographic mm. watching the show in the yeah. home country. Yeah. Than here, I don't. I I I, I, re- I really don't know. I'm just sort of waffling now. But. And for me, I, don't, I guess from a, from a personal sort of selfish point of view, because it was the 35th anniversary year, I was kind of hoping that they would mark that with some, you know, really off the wall, big drama episodes this year. I don't know. Maybe well, we're not going to get only that. Four, we're only four weeks in. I know we are, but does this mean that we're not going to get that? We're, I, don't, I know. don't know. I feel like we get it anyway. We do. Um, but maybe we're... Know, you know, back in the day when we had the Summer Bay Stalker or, you know, mm. things, really big things like that, or when the River Boys mm. came in, I feel like we need something really big to happen. I feel like we'll probably end up somewhere in between where the makers of the show sort of want to do something for the fans and appease everybody, new and mm. old, mm. but need to get it through the network. <laughs> so yeah. do you remember on the 30th anniversary, um, we didn't really have like a, this is the 30th anniversary episode. Today is the 17th of January. This is yeah. the episode. We didn't have yeah. that and we haven't no. had it again. Yeah. Um, but we had sort of things throughout the year that were like an homage to the... Mm history yes. so we had a reenactment of the Blake and Meg death really didn't yes. we that came round again with, yeah um who um, was it now was it Bill not was it Billy and um Billy and his and that fish face what? <laughs> what was it? it was VJ wasn't it VJ that's it <laughs> <laughs> can you cut that <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not um and um, so I, maybe we'll get little things like that. And, and honestly, I those kind of things, you, little. there was a few other things I can't remember off the top of my head now. It was five years ago. Mm-hmm. But there were little things that only only a diehard would know, would yeah. notice and know. And I, and, I, and I thought that was quite a clever way of sort of nodding to the past, you know, Um uh, we'd be look. I think we'd be lucky if we got that again. Yeah, true. Yeah, I don't right. know what are people saying. Right, Similar okay, let's things. get let's get on it. So, right. our Holby fan on Twitter said, "I genuinely don't understand why a show reaching an incredible milestone isn't celebrated in every possible way. A show lasting mm-hmm. five years is a big feat these days, let alone thirty-five. This is something to celebrate, shout about, and be proud of, not hide from. Congratulations, home and away. Well, you can't argue with that, can you, really? You can't. No. And mm. then somebody replied to that. So Mr. David underscore 885 said, exactly. The show is still rating. It won the Logie for the most popular drama this year. It is Channel 7's biggest export. And we should be shouting about the 35th anniversary from the rooftops. So there's a lot of people. The irony of this is that the press have picked it up and now we all know it's 35. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of got out there by, by accident, really, hasn't it? We have got a, a, an opposing opinion um, mm. on Twitter. So little underscore cinders two says, disagree. I actually stopped watching last year because the show's completely lost what it was originally about. Seems they are happy to lose long-term fans in order to get a teenage audience. And um, again... You know, that'll be driven by the business yeah. Yeah. side of the industry, you know. Yeah. And um, then we've got another person that says, I disagree. Actual fans of the show will already know it's 35 years old and would love to celebrate the show and look back on its earlier years. They certainly care more about ratings than they do the actual fans. So, again, people are picking up on this, that it's... Mm. And, uh, uh, yeah... I mean, all all both sides, all angles, you can Mm. see it from, you know, we're we're long term fans ourselves. I think we're more sympathetic towards it because we're such big fans. Yeah. You know, I think we're just happy anyway. Um, Mm. 
you know, I'm not going to come on here and, and kick off because they're not doing a big special reunion episode with loads of whatever. Yeah. I was absolutely over the moon that we got to watch some old ones over Christmas. Yeah. Um, and then come back to the show as it is now. Mm. Um, there's the, there is definitely a little bit of um, not an healthy debate, but there's a there is a little bit of rumbles online about the show not being the same as it was and yeah. I'm so glad it's not mm. As, having watched some of these old ones now especially the early early ones the show wouldn't be here if it was still no. like that it's absolutely no. boring most soaps were you know soap was way more sort of everyday it was of its time that's what we yeah. wanted to see back then and what we're yeah. seeing now is what we want to see now and I think that's the whole point of it isn't it, it has to evolve because and it's and the, the figures that we're hearing from Australia are it's evolving and growing. So it's not evolving and, and dying by by any yeah. stretch, as far as I can we, tell. Which is interesting for broadcast TV because we talk a lot now. This isn't just specific to homers now, but we talk a lot mm. about soap genre dying. Broadcast mm. TV is on its way out. We've now yeah. got one of the biggest soap brands, Neighbours, going exclusively mm. to streaming. Um, Another one, Days of Our Lives, another massive soap brand in the US got, yeah. has, has already gone completely streaming. It's no longer on broadcast TV. Mm. Um, it's going to be interesting what happens in the coming years with soaps mm. and what the networks decide to do with them. Would, does the soap opera of this era look different to the one that we've all grown up on? I think yeah. it probably does. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, right. and like you say, change or die. Mm. I, don't, I don't know. Mm. I don't. I, 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 I genuinely don't know what I would do if I had to make that decision. No, you know, do you appease? Do you alienate the young ones that all the advertisers want want to want to be in front of? Mm. Or do you, you know, you know, and 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 then celebrate its past? Or do you try and try and acknowledge something in some way, but keep keep the advertisers up? I don't, I don't know. I don't know I what think, we'll do. I think there's a middle ground that they're not exploring. But you know, like I say, we're not we're not over in Australia. We don't know the demographic. We don't know the details and how they watch TV over there. What's popular? What's not popular? What what the kids watch over there? We're not we're not on the ground there. So. The data that these that t- these networks have on us, mm. you know, they know they know who's watching and what. Yeah, and it, that's what drives decisions. Yeah, yeah. There is another tweet that I'll just mention. So it's Matt Official ninety two, um, and they say I think it's a shame and an insult for the cast and crew that have worked on the soap for over the years, and thirty five years is a brilliant milestone. I can't can't disagree with that at all. No, you can't. But there is only about three of them that have worked on it that long. Yeah, that's true. Not, I think there's quite a lot of crew that have been on it for quite a long time, isn't oh, there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right there. And they're, yeah, the, uns- they're the unsung heroes of the show, aren't they? True. Um, very, the very people true. behind the scenes that make all the magic happen. Because we talk- we heard a lot about that. You know, when we did a review on the podcast last year of Ray Mars' um, This Is Your Life episode. Yeah. And yeah. they did bring out a few people that worked behind the scenes on the show for that, didn't they? Like the um, the lady that brought out the lamb chops. Was it lamb chops or pork chops? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. His, his favourite dinner on <laughs> lamb set. Lamb cutlets. Lamb cutlets, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people that have been on the show for a long, long time working behind the scenes that, you know, we're not celebrating them either because mm. we don't see them on screen and you know we we don't realize the amount of work that they're doing when they deserve to to celebrate this milestone mm. as well so it does mm. feel a little bit like a a kick in the teeth for for those people it does. It's not it does. acknowledged if they're not going to do it let why don't we do it as a fan base why don't we get together and do something you know like yeah it's not it's not what what you want but you know we don't all make the decisions but you know we can celebrate it we have been there, haven't we? On, on, I mean, from our point of view on the podcast, we've been talking about this for absolutely ages, probably since last September we've been talking about the milestone. Mm, we have, um, we have. So I we, think we're we in for a good about... year. <laughs> we we're in for a good year, you know. Yeah. I, 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 it can't, it can't, it can't, 
can't be any worse than 2022. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How rude. <laughs> um, you know, and, and we've started off strong. So yeah. I guess it's a bit early to judge. There'll be, th- there'll be things throughout the year, I think, that's going to make it a year to remember. Mm. I have faith and I agree with everybody on what they're saying. You know, it would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Thank you for listening. We will be back with more episode discussion from Summer Bay soon. Until then, join the discussion online at Coastal News Pod.